Heavenly Father, please be with me today and help me bring this message. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. May the words that I will speak will come from you, Lord, so that everyone who will listen to this message will learn and use that to their very lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everyone. You know that there are so many things we can learn from ants. Today, on this video, I'm going to be talking about what can we learn from ants. God has asked us to consider ants in two different places in the Bible. So I took that word from the Bible and I did a research on ants. I think it's very edifying if we direct our attention to this very interesting creature in our world that God tell us that we can learn something from ants. And there are so many. So what I did, I searched online and I was floored with the information that I found online. There are so many types of ants how complex they are. The very fact that they don't have a leader, they have a queen, but all she does is lay eggs. So, in order for me to prepare this message to you all, I have studied, searched online, and found more information about ants. Ants are absolutely amazing. For one thing, I found out that 15% of all the biomass living creature in this world are basically ants. So think about that. If we take all the animals that live on this earth and weigh them, 15% of them will be ants. That's a lot of ants. They live across all the world from the tip of South America all the way to Alaska and you can find them in desert you can find them on mountain top you can find them basically everywhere some colony of ants like the one in Japan they reported about a hundred eighty million queens and about three hundred six billion workers that are interconnected their nests. I would say that ants will rule the world. And here is a comforting thought and my advice to you. <laughs> Make us friends with the ants. Make friends with the ants now because they will rule the world. A lot of things we can learn from ants. The first and foremost we can learn from ants is that they are very industrious. Ants work very hard. They carry out a very complex building projects. Ants accomplish a lot of things. Even though they don't have any leaders, yeah, it's true they have a queen, but all she does is lay eggs. And they don't give order. There is no one leading them. They seem to know their own job. There is no logical way to explain how ants even evolve with every one of them needing the other. They are very complex in their structure. Each one of them have a different role. And believe it or not, they are really, really industrious. They are not lazy. The scripture says in the Bible in Proverbs 6, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 to 8, it says, Go to the end, you sluggard, consider its way and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or rule, yet it store its provision in summer and gather its food at the harvest. So there you go. Ants are not lazy. They gather food during summertime 
they work hard, they work hard, and they don't let somebody take up a slack where they drag their feet. They're all going full board all the time when they are working. Then and again, it also said in Proverbs 3, 4, the soul of the lazy person has a strong desire, but it gets nothing. But the soul of the one who does his best gets more than he needs. My friends, we should be diligent like ants and industrious in serving God as well as in our daily regular occupation. Scientists say that ants are probably the most intelligent insect. Why? Because when they observe it, when they investigate this ant, they have a tiny brain, like a mushroom shape, a little organ that resembles human brain. So believe it or not, they have some elements of intelligence, which is something to consider. In spite of the fact that they are icky bugs, ants are very clean. Ants are some of the great cleaners of the world. Not only they spend time grooming and cleaning each other to keep their body completely clean, but also they spray disinfectant in their food before they bring them inside their nest. You know why? Because they know that if they bring bacteria into their nest, they know that it will spread and kill everybody. So they protect themselves by cleaning and avoid contagious disease. So there you go. Ants to the great extent clean the world. You will be surprised all around the world, ants are cleaning the world. And as Christian, we can learn from that, God commanded us from His Word in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 to 17. It reads, Wash and make yourself clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong and learn to do right. Seek justice. Like ants, we should be clean and spray ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ so that ourself will be clean. And something else very interesting about ants, they have interesting, complementary, considerate relationship in God's world in a number of ways. For instance, when the ants live in the tree, they take care of the tree. They clean the tree because they know that it, the tree gives them shelter and it provides food for them. They protect the tree from another box. But listen to this. They would not bother the bee who pollinate the tree to bring fruits for them. Another thing we can learn from ants. Ants are good farmer. They farm. Do you know that in the Bible, it tells us that Christians should farm too? It's amazing that ants really farm. Ants farm aphids and fungi. Christians should also be farmers, meaning farm the word of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, it reads, Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. The gospel is like a seed that we need to spread it, cultivate it, harvest it. One soul plants it, another soul waters it, and another soul reaps it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 to 8, it reads, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave increase. So then, neither he plants is anything, nor he who waters, 
but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. Each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. And then on Proverbs 30, 24, 25, there are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. Ants are very selfless. What that means? It means that they don't think of just themselves. It's not about their individual self. It's about the entire colony. The church should be something like that. You and I are just different part of the body of Jesus Christ. I might be just an instrument to tell you this, to tell about what can we learn from ants. I'm just doing my part as a messenger and I'm no more important than any part of the body of Christ. Everyone have different gifts. And the big thing is, we are here to represent Christ in this world. Sometimes everybody are so interested in, in the church and asking the church, what is in it for me? What can I get out of the church? What can they do for me? <laughs> People are asking like that. But if you're asking that question to your church, you are not thinking like an ant. You did not know that you are supposed to consider an ant. Think like an ant. The Bible says that we should consider them. They are industrious, they are clean, and it's about it's and it's not about one individual. We should be thinking it's not just about us, it's not about me, but we should be thinking of the entire church members, church community. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible said, Let each of you look out not for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. That is supposed to be the Christian spirit. It's not just about me. It's all about us. If you study the Lord's Prayer, you cannot find the word I in the Lord's Prayer. It says, lead us, deliver us, give us. We should be more thinking, whole body of the church, the whole body, and not just an individual. If that is clear to you, please say amen. Amen. Then again, on Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, the Bible said, let him who still no longer but rather let him labor, working with his hand what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. It is not just getting us something or to get ahead, but we are working so that we can give something to others. Have you heard of the honeypot? I've read online, honeypot were born very small, tiny, but they were fed, they fed a lot so that they can feed others. They were not born that way, it's like human. They were not born big, eventually they were born so little and they get there. Honeypots are born small and they're willing to store food so that they can feed others. We should be like them, storing food, the Word of God, into our heart, into our mind, so that we can share this to others and feed others.
and share it to others. We should store so that we can share it to others. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, and willing to share. Ants are good burden barriers. They are making sure everyone are being fed and everyone love each other. I believe with all my heart and I think that before the second coming, before Jesus Christ comes back, our churches will return to a place like no man said that ought to have his own, but every man gave and sacrificed that others might be cared for. Ants are good shepherd. I've learned that ants are good shepherd. Ants have a domestic livestock. Yes, they do. Many different kind of ants do this. There is one particular ants that take care of ant heads as their livestock. How many of you know this? How many of you heard this before? But they do. They have these little tiny ant heads and they take care of them. They put them in the tree or plant. Ants move these ampids from place to place. They drink their sap from the plant and when the ant gets hungry, they milk these ampids. Except they don't have an otter. But ants stroke them and ampids give them a little bit of nectar. So ants take care of ampids. Ants are good shepherd, the Bible mentioned, but listen to this. We are to be a good shepherd as well. Jesus said that he is a good shepherd. A good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling who is not the shepherd doesn't. In John chapter 10, verse, verses 11 and 12, says, I am a good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling, who is not a shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flee because he does not care about the sheep. We ought to take care about each other's welfare. We are ought to protect one another. One of the challenges in our church today is to make sure that our church member does not slip between the cracks. You know what I mean? We have to make sure that all folks are taken care of. All folks are cared for. It is so easy to miss a few weeks. Then if you forget them, the wolf will come in and get them. So what we need in our church is a good shepherd, a good pastor who will watch for each other, who will watch the members, making sure that each sheep are prospering and they're being fed with the word of God. If that is clear to you, please say Amen. Amen. Ants are also good soldiers. Have you heard of the army ants? Army ants strike terror. You have to respect them because they are very dependable soldiers. These army ants grow 400 times bigger than the regular ants. And they are very tenacious. They will lay their lives to protect the colonies. Like an army ants, we should be brave. We should also recognize that we are here to protect our, our members, our friends. And we should endure hardship while we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ and to be with him in our place in heaven. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 to 4, it says, You therefore must endure hardship 
as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as soldier. All Christians and God's people must be without fear in witnessing to others, proclaiming the good news to the others. In the Bible, Jesus said that we should not fear. He said, fear not. Do not fear. Jesus said that a lot of times in the Bible that we should not be afraid to witness, to proclaim the good news. People will be attracted to anyone who got courage in his heart to proclaim the good news. I hope that it's clear to you. If that's so, please say Amen. Amen. Ants work together. That's another thing that I learned from ants. They work together. They all cooperate to one another doing different responsibilities. Ants accomplish great things by working together. One of the things that impressed me is that almost every ant in the colony with his little tiny brain in one cell, and it's the closest thing that you ever seen communicating physically. They don't speak. They just have this telepathy at speaking to each other, but they can accomplish great things by working together. The Bible told us in Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 6, For us we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having them gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophecy in proportion to our pay. Okay? So scientists cannot figure out how the end communicate, but somehow they have a telepathy in their brain cell that are connected, forming one body of the colony. And all of them knows what to do to get the job done. My friends, would it be nice if all the church members act like that, act like an ant? We are all collectively the brain of Jesus Christ. We are collectively have the mind and we are doing our role in the body of Christ and showing to the entire world what body of Jesus Christ are like. If we combine our gifts, our talents, we can accomplish great things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 6, there are diversity of gifts, but the spirit, but the same spirit, there are differences of ministry, but the same Lord, and there are diversity of activities, but it is the same God's work all in all. Okay, that's very clear. Let me ask you this. Do you know your place or role in the body of Christ? Do you know if you're a Christian and if you belong to a church, you have a job or a role to play? Amen? And maybe the pastor or the elders is just waiting for you to let them know that you can help the church. You can use your talent. You can use your spiritual gift to help your church. It is true that it's really nice to be saved and go to a church, but if you are not part of the body, if you are not doing anything to help the church, well, you need to be an ant. You need to learn and think like an ant. There is so many things we can do. Let us do it like the ants. They have the colony. Every Christian ought to have their talent and using their talents for the glory of the Lord in some capacity for one way or another, for the body of Christ. Amen? You might be thinking for old people, like me, I'm old. Oh, I'm getting old. 
I can't do anything else, basically, but listen to this. If you can pray, you can be a prayer warrior. You can be part of the church as a prayer warrior. What do you think? And here's the thing. Anyone, I mean anyone, has a role to play in the church. It's not just to be just sitting there in the church, in the pew. It's not good to just sitting in the pew or waiting on the sideline. God wants us to be there, active, and using whatever gifts He gave us. Use our talents that God has given us. I know you have some talents. You have gifts from God and needing to be used in profiting the body of Christ. Amen? You remember the parable of the talents and you, we can find this in Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25 verse 15. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on journey. So if any one of you has this talent, let us use this talent to the glory of God. And my friends, you know the story, if you don't use your talent, it will be taken away from you. So use your talent. Be like an ant. Amen? Another thing that I learned from ants is ants protect their own and they tenaciously protect their young. Ants are very loyal to their colony. If some outside force or another bug comes in, and they will lay their life to protect their own. Every colony are brethren. They are all brothers and sisters. And we should too. We should look for one another. We should help one another. We are family, right? Ants are all brethren and protect each other, and we should do the same. We should bear anyone's burden. Amen? In Romans chapter 12, verse 15, it says, Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Okay? Ants care tenaciously for their young. When they are threatened, the first thing they will do is they will run to their nursery and carry out their young. If there's a threat in their colony, like a flood or something, the first thing they will do is collect their eggs and they carry their, their young ones to the safety. They tenderly carry the eggs and their young ones. They know that if they don't care their young ones, the colony is doomed. We, as Christians, should do the same. Train our young ones. If our church don't make our children get involved, we will be doomed. You know, but the, by the time that the ants were born, it's crawl out of its shell. They go to work doing something. And so we should do the same to our children. If they are old enough to do something in a church, let us make them involved, do something in a church. I am so thankful for the church who made their children get involved in the work and they have a program for children helping a lot of things in the church. And I'm so proud of them by doing that. So we need to watch for our young ones, for our children. Ants are sacrificial. By the way, this is my last point. What are the chances that those ants have on flood? If there's a flood, everybody will die. But because they are so intelligent and sacrificial creatures, they will create a bridge to save the colony. They will sacrifice their life and donate their self to save others. They will create a bridge so that the other can pass over their backs. And that's really amazing. They will develop this ladder so that everyone can climb and go on their back and cross the other side. Do we want to do that? We want to do that to others. We want to offer ourselves as a bridge 
that other might cross. Like what Jesus did, Jesus came to be our bridge between heaven and earth. Jesus provided the link between heaven and earth. We've been separated by our sin and ants become a bridge so that others can walk cross. Would it be nice if all Christians have the same attitude? Would it be nice if all Christians are all meek and that their mentality is like the ants that helping one another? I hope that everyone have a mentality of use me, O oh Lord, to help others find their way back to you. Sometimes when there is flood, ants are risk of drowning, they will make a bowl among themselves, create a raft, they put eggs on their babies on top, and some of them know that they will drown, they will die clinging together, sacrificing themselves just to put the colony so that those on top may live. They are extremely sacrificial. You know that the Christian should have this principle as well. And the Bible said in John chapter 15, verse 13, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for his friend. I hope that it's clear to you. In closing, maybe you did not know that we can learn so much from us. But, but I think even as we hold all things which God had made, even an ants, there are little standards illuminating in it. And every sparkling spot that reveals the character of God, yes, even in ants, you can see the goodness of God. We can learn some lesson from the ants. There are lessons for the church my friends, I challenge you all today. I am hoping that this message will help you learn and use ants in cooperation, in love, in burying one another's burden and sacrifices. That I am hoping that you learn something from these ants. Thank you and may God bless you. Let us bow head for closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this message. The things that we learn about us. It's so inspiring as we contemplate incredible, miraculous, and powering feature we see in this part of your creation. We also inspire the way they cooperate, the way they sacrifice, and they, the way they give. Lord, I pray that we, human, with brains, which infinitely greater than this creature, can model those attributes of Jesus' love and sacrifice, work, cleanliness, and giving. I pray that you bless each one of us, that we can be better part of your body and give us self-sacrificing spirit in the mind of Jesus. Be with us, Lord, and give us wisdom so that we can apply what we learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.